Hey everybody. Well, I've got the trio, the Red Hot Trio, where all the drama is happening this week on The Young and the Restless. Oh my God. Okay, so we've got Mark Grossman, Adam, Sharon, hey Kish, Sharon, Jordi Villasuso, Ray. Thank you guys for being here today. Um, we have a lot to chat about, but I want to first start off by the great news that your castmate, Sasha Kaye, uh, is the new Supergirl. And it's like a pop culture moment that we're having right now. And I felt, I don't want to be remiss without talking about it for a moment with all of you. Jordi, it's your little sister on screen. How do you feel about her getting this role? And did you have a moment to chat with her yet? Yeah, yeah, I've talked to her. Um, I actually called her right when I saw it uh, announced by Young and the Restless on their Twitter feed. So I was like, oh, okay, so this is like, this is happening because they wouldn't put it out if, if it wasn't happening. Um, so I called her and, you know, I couldn't be happier for so many reasons, right? Culturally, um, Sasha, you know, Sasha, her background, where she comes from, and just, this is just such an incredible change for her life, you know, in so many respects. And, um, I really think she's going to do justice to the role. Um, and I think she's very deserving. She works extremely hard. And, uh, you know, when she came on the show, um, I remember reading before even really hanging out with her, just reading an article that SOD had done about her coming on and where she was from and literally crying on the way to work because she has such humble beginnings and, you know, she has such aspirations for herself or her family. And I'm, so happy that, that it's gonna come true for her. You know, at least that's the way it looks like right now. Um, she's got a great head on her shoulders. She's, when we talked uh, yesterday, she said, you know, she wasn't able to talk to me the whole day cause she was just dealing with nonstop. And she also needed time for herself, which as a 24 year old and having that awareness to be like, I gotta like just settle in and deal with this is, is great. So um, I'm so happy on so many levels. Sharon, I know mean, you've been with the show for so long and, I, and I, I thought it was so interesting. People were like, oh, she's a soap actress, you know, not giving her the due. And there was a little bit of that going on. And I just thought maybe you could speak to that about how hard soap actors work. And um, I just thought it was a little not fair. I didn't see any of those comments. Um, that's unfortunate, but um, what, what I thought is you know, I'd heard comments like that before. You know, I've been in yeah, daytime for 27, 30 years, I, you know, and I used to hear comments like that more often. I was thinking when I heard about Sasha's great new role was how nice is it that more and more we see soap actors go into prime time or big girls in film. It just seems to me that that's happening more and more often. So I didn't hear any of the negative comments. I actually had really a lot of great thoughts and great hope and um, for anyone leave, coming from daytime and using it to launch into something else. And, um, you know, many people lately have led the way. Yeah. And Mark, as somebody who joined the show and in a central role on YNR, you know, you, you had been kind of thrown into the fire right away when you started on the show. Yeah. Because Adam is such a big part, you know, he he takes up a lot of room because he's such a key character and he mm -hmm. stirs the pot so much. You know, what was it like? Again, I, I remember when we first talked, it's very daunting though, isn't it? The, the rigors of daytime when you first get there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just wanted to say huge congrats to Sasha. I mean, that's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Um, I mean, that, that's huge. So I'm uh, huge. Yeah. huge. Yeah, that's it's. You know, I don't. I don't even know what to say. It's it's just right. so amazing for her, and it's such a, a massive thing. So I just wish her all the best. And um. um but you you had asked about uh, the role of Adam and taking on you know this this big role in the show with all that material. Yeah, it was it was a lot. It was just kind of thrown into that. So. Uh, thankfully I had people like Jordy and, and Sharon there and, and, uh, I could go to for, uh, for help. And, and, uh, I just kind of had to, you know, learn as I go along. And I, luckily <laughs> I had great people on the show to help me along the way, you know? 
trial by fire. Yes. Trial exactly. by fire in daytime. That was my point. Like, I just wanted to say how hard people work is my point in daytime. And I, I always have felt that they don't get the due they deserve. That's all I'm saying. I think like, but, but what Sharon was saying, I think more now probably they, they are, but sometimes you see that they don't seem to get the same due. Well, you're put in this box, literally. Yeah as an actor that they're like oh you're this so you can only do this and they don't see the work that goes into what we do you know someone like mark comes on and for me it's always like when we test like when sharon and i have tested or i've tested another actor like i think you can tell right away who's going to be able to pull it off because it takes a person to work really hard and diligently to put something worth watching on screen. I think Mark did that from the get-go. I mean, we just talked this week about like how you had like a month, right, Mark, to prepare and you were like already working super hard on a lot of things. And I was like, that's just a testament to like people who come in this game from daytime and, you know, and Sasha to her credit too. I mean, that kid, when it came to working hard and coming to set always prepared she she stepped up and i think you know they usually people who don't do the work they usually kind of fall off slowly but surely um and i think uh and i give credit to sharon too i think that was spectacular what you said because it is happening and it should happen people should be able to go from daytime to nighttime and maybe back to daytime because right. they enjoy daytime and they get a job for six months in daytime and then they want to work and they want to go back to something else Right. Well, let's talk about this uh, triangle and what's happening here. First of all, Sharon. Okay. So just, she does realize Sharon that she's constantly pulled towards Adam. I mean, she obviously knows that she just can't stop herself <laughs> and she keeps trying to deny. And, and these things just come out of her, you know, what she says, you know, you're in the viewer, you're like, okay, Sharon, like, let's be real. Like <laughs> Sharon, the character, you know? So so how are you playing this? Because you have to like constantly deny the feelings, but you really want them. And then what are you going to do with Ray? And so how are you handling in your head playing this? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I realize <laughs> Sharon realizes what's going on. She knows what she's doing. Okay. She, she realizes she's not having a bipolar moment. Um, <laughs> She, she, she's always been that way when it comes to Adam for years, decades. Um, you know, we, we don't always put that on screen. Sometimes we play Sharon and Adam, sometimes we haven't, sometimes it's there a little or it's a lot. Um, but he's always been there in her life. She's always felt that way anytime she's laid eyes on him. No matter who's played the role, as long as Sharon has known Adam, when she lays eyes on him, that's what she feels. That's just, you know, that's that relationship. That's how she feels about that person and always has. Um, and, uh, you know, over the years, when you're building a character on a soap opera, you're, you're not just building who your character is. You're also building and defining what each of the relationships are with all the other characters and how you feel about them and where they fit into your life. You know, the way in real life you you do, you know, your your friends and your family have a, maybe a certain kind of role and, and your relationship is um, each unique and um, and your feelings for people are unique. And um, so that's, you know, that's how Sharon feels about Adam. And, uh, you know, but it, it's hard though to play a triangle. And I know Mark said this a lot because he not only, like I said, Jordy, Mark's new to all of this and it's a lot of work for him, but now he's trying to juggle being in a triangle and it just makes you crazy. What do you do? And, um, you know, I think that, uh, I don't know the answer to that. I know my answer to it is just, I've been here so long and doing it for so long. I just do it. Yeah. I just do it. Right. Yeah. You know, without you know, overthinking it or worrying too much about it, you know, all you can do at the end of the day is you get your script and it says what it says, and that's what we're doing today. Right, I mean, I was actually looking back on the things that Adam and Sharon have gone through collectively together over the years. You know, he kidnapped her child. I mean, he's done a lot of really <laughs> not great things. Yeah. And yet she's still- What? Yeah, well, I know, but shocking. I have to say on that, because I see a lot of comments, I see a lot of comments about bad things Adam's yeah. done. 
every character on the show has done horrible things to Sharon. <laughs> Everybody. Probably worse things. Po- Victor poisoned her, tried to change her meds when she was crazy, and Nick's cheated on her. I don't know how many times when their child died. Um, you know, it and Sharon's done bad things. We've all done bad things. So when it comes to trying to make that argument, well, we're all guilty. So <laughs> all right. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> good point, Sharon. Very, very good point. Very well Thanks, said. Babe. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do find triangles difficult, you know. You do. Yeah, I I um you know, obviously I didn't I, I didn't have a lot of experience playing um, you know, because I was new to the show, obviously. So yeah, I mean I've talked to some of the the vets and I've been like, how do you pull this off well? <laughs> without looking like a total uh, jerk. And so, yeah, it, it, it's hard, you know? It, it's, it gets challenging when you say something to Sharon and then three days later you say the same thing to Chelsea. And, you know, as an actor, you're trying to justify why would you say those things and, and you know? Um, so, I, yeah, I find it challenging, uh, but I guess that's a good thing, but uh, I, I, I hope I get better with time. But like Sharon said, it does so much come down to the script. At the end of the day, it's like, the you know, this is where we are today yeah. and it, yeah. it, where the story's going. So, but there's obviously so much history with, with Adam and Sharon and, and yeah. Did you realize how much history they had when you got the role? I mean, I think to, to a degree when I started to do my research and started watching old clips of the show and then Sharon was, you know, I'd screen tested with Sharon. So she was the first one that I met and I, probably asked her every question I could think of and I was just trying to get ready for my first day and um you know I just would watch old videos constantly and then I would would talk to Sharon and and try to get the backstory um and then yeah it kind of Adam was involved with Sharon and then Chelsea and then it's kind of just been been a little bit back and forth since since I've been on the show, you know, and I think that's historically how it's been. You know, uh, Sharon was Adam's first love, and then he met Chelsea. They had a child, and and there's always that that uh, kind of triangle with with them. When I interviewed Sharon Case for her 25th anniversary interview, I said to her, "So, what well, you know, when you screen tested with Mark, what did you think?" And you know, she was like, "He was the one." like that I believe that she, I think she knew. Sharon, is that correct? I did. I knew is that, that Mark is that was. true, Sharon? It's true, <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you. <laughs> you did, you said you knew that he was the one to play the role. Yep, he was definitely the one, right one for the role. Um, we, um, you know, if we, if we really weren't sure about the actors we'd met with, we could have taken more time. We could have done more casting, seen more people, but I didn't think there was any need to, and everybody agreed with me. Mark was right for the role. Can I tell them about our, our, our audition? In oh, I'm never going to let this down. I wondered if you were going to bring that up. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> she, she dropped the paper in the middle of the audition. Big deal. I don't know what the big she, deal is about this. I, it's I not, it's not really that big deal. Yeah. It's like, you know, you're doing think, this screen test and yep, there's like yep. the room full of people staring at you. You're like trying to, you know, do <laughs> your best job. And so Sharon's there. She hasn't even read the scene. She, she drops her paper and... Uh, I just kept going and I was Good like, all right. I, I've done I so many screen okay. tests that I, we were in a phase where casting was asking me to assist on a lot of different readings, even characters that I wasn't going to be working with. They just asked me if I would assist. So I had done so many scenes with different people. I'm sorry. I really meant to, to memorize that scene and I almost had it memorized, but you know, I'm sorry, your whole life and job was on the line and I almost messed it up for you there. I, I, all I did was drop my paper, like my solution. The truth comes out. There you but go. Apparently oh, there that is. was really distracting. See, but Jordy knows, Jordy, when we work on stage, we have so many distractions. Like, it's like somebody drove a train through there sometimes and you just keep going. I just thought it, you, thought it was funny. When you're ready to go, you just throw your script. That's why you got the on. role, Mark. Cause she dropped, that was the test. She the dropped test was, the paper you, you kept the going, paper. bro. That's how they were like, he's in. You're, you're so right, that was the test. You. 
She's just going to start throwing things in the yeah. middle of the scene and <laughs> see if you get distracted. And well, can you keep going? Ray's kind of had it with this whole situation at this point, because here's the deal. Yeah. Now there's a photo that came to light of them kissing. Yeah. He knows about that. She can deny yeah. whatever she wants to say, Sharon, but it's like the proof is right there. And he's yeah. given her chance after chance after chance. And she knows in his gut, Ray, that she's pulled to this guy. So now she's got even more tangible proof. So what's the what's he gonna do at this point? I mean, dude, this guy's known for a long time. Come on, I had somebody somebody on Twitter like post like all the videos of how long <laughs> I've known about Adam and Sharon. <laughs> it's like I still had beard on the show when I knew. I was like, oh my God, even back then. Um, what's he gonna do? I think, um, you know, this Adam sickness, uh, this this addiction, um, this this pathology that he has, uh, you know, he wants he wants to to deal. I think ultimately Ray hopes that he'll just end up arresting Adam and he'll just go away forever. I think that'll like that's kind of playing in the back of my mind. Like, there's no way that Adam can keep up this behavior for this much longer. Um, so I think that's always like the carrot because he's he's mad about Sharon. He's crazy about her, and you know. And there's also, I've also kind of thought, well, there's some ego involved here too. Like, you know, I'm going to win versus this guy. I, like, I, I, I got to be the guy here. I, I can't lose to this guy. So there's that that plays as well. Um, but man, does Ray have a threshold for dealing with this stuff? I've uh, never isn't met he, isn't anyone. Isn't he really wounded here? Like emotionally yeah. wounded? This is tough. Yeah. But remember, his wife had sex with his brother. That's and right. again, she did it again, and now they're having a child, and he was still able to move on. And so he's just got this thing that he's like, ah, I'll give her a pass. We'll, we'll get past this, and then, and then it comes back. So maybe it's his own problem. Maybe Ray needs to to deal with this. So does Ray want to stay in the game and fight for her, knowing yeah. that he, he does? He believes in his gut. Yes, because I think he knows. Um, I think I, I used the, ro- the the word pariah. Uh, when I was uh, talking about Adam and I think he knows that ultimately this isn't going to be good for her. And it's this uh, for better or for worse, it's the savior uh, quality. Like he wants to save her from, and he wants to, you know, he, he wanted to save his mother. He wants to save his sister. He's got this thing that he has to come in and, and save um, whether it's, you know, the various women in his life that he wants to save her from this man who ultimately he knows will, lead her to to just uh not a good place so i think that that's also really um you know part of it but it's gonna take it's uh, you know i think it's he's gonna realize that this isn't just something he can do on his own so i think sooner than later these um issues will have to be dealt with in a deeper way so they can um hopefully find some light at least for him give him some hope that this will be dealt with in a way that he's not carrying all the weight it's kind of shared now and and after these you know various blow-ups that i've had it's like okay well what are you going to do now so he's had to find another way to kind of solve it we've actually all loved your blow-ups because we've been on social media people are like jordy's amazing in this stuff they need to give him stuff because it was really great they're great scenes for you and people get to see you lose it a bit you know you're not having to play this okay you know everything right well that's a lot well it's interesting too because when i got it i was like it was before the break and i was like oh finally you know and uh to tell you the truth michael it didn't take a lot of work because i had been dealing with this as an actor for so long having to eat this having to keep my mouth shut and just be this nice guy and understanding and and empathy and I'm grateful to Josh that he finally gave me the, you know, and it was in retrospect, it kind of worked for me because I was finally able to release all that stuff that I had just swallowed and had to deal with. So it was all there and I could just like whew, finally just release it. Right. Yeah. You know? Mark, what was it like having confrontation scenes as the character of Adam and Ray? I mean, where's Adam coming from now that he knows Ray knows kind of what's up? Well, Jordy, those uh, I gotta say, man, those were great scenes. Great. Scene. I remember. I know. I, I told you this. And yeah. Thank you. I mean, I re- I read that. And I was like, God, I want to do these. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I want to do these. Yeah. And then I watched. 
Jordan, I was like, you, he killed those scenes. He did. Um, they were great. It's all in good fun, you know, and Adam just likes to stir the pot. And, and now, um, <laughs> we've been, me, me and Ray have been kind of doing this, this dance since I came on the show. And, um, you know, I don't, I guess this is the first time that they're together and me and Sharon have kissed. I mean, it's technically we've now cheated and, this is serious. Um, and Adam has his own stuff to deal with. You know what I mean? He's got a fiance at home and in a, in a wheelchair. And this is just a really kind of sticky place to be. And, um, but as an actor, it's, it's fun. And I know, um, you know, it's going to come to a head and it's, it's fun to play. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun to play. There's a lot of drama going on. The weird thing is, is that like you have these two men, right? These are guys that are just like, they're, they're ready to go at each other's necks, you know, and, but we still have to act kind of far away from each other. So it's all in, you know, oh, we yeah, kind yeah. Of, we're, we're keeping it very, um, you're talking about here because of COVID protocol. Because of COVID. Right. So it's interesting to see how that's translated in, you know, performance, you know, when we do, uh, because I believe there's going to have to come some moment where somebody's going to want to, you know, throw yeah. a punch or something. Sharon, what, where, what at this point now she knows that Ray knows that they kissed and, and does she feel guilty or what, what does she feel at this point? Um, well, yeah, she does. She feels guilty and she keeps saying to herself, though, and to Ray, that that was it. That, that nothing more is going to happen. She, and she's convinced that that's true and Ray's convinced and then the minute she sees Adam that's not true anymore but she didn't really didn't realize that she thought she'd made up her mind but every time she sees Adam things change um so you know in the moment she feels guilty and then uh makes a decision you know to set boundaries and and means it but uh you know that those that boundaries work. don't seem cold <laughs> That doesn't work on daytime. Never works. Boundaries no, that doesn't work ever on work on daytime. You don't set boundaries. And the fans don't want <laughs> boundaries to work for anything. So, yeah. <laughs> I think the fans have gotten to know that usually when Sharon says absolutely about something, she means there's the no way that's going to happen. <laughs> now, Melissa Claire Egan is playing, you know, Chelsea in the wheelchair and she can't move. Do you guys have... Do you guys have fun with that? I mean, she's not talking and she's communicating and, you know, we're hearing the voices of her in her head. And what is it like when you're actually doing those scenes? It's actually really funny. I think because, it'd be funny to do, right? Well, it's funny because we'll be in a scene and then like, we'll be acting and then all of a sudden the voiceover will come over the loudspeaker <laughs> and it'll like startle you and you'll be, and you like, you kind of want to start laughing. But, but like, you have to act like you didn't hear it, right? And it's, it's, it's so it was a little challenging at, at first. Um, yeah, Sharon, do you have something to add to that? Well, I, I thought the same thing. It is, it, the circumstance is funny, but the first few scenes we did, all three of us together with Sharon doing the counseling were kind of funny. Um, and uh, that's what I took from them and uh, especially the first time she Sharon went there to counsel her and I thought the three of us were were having fun doing this kind of comedy bit together and I can see that bit going on and on and on and I, I wish that they had kept writing it that way but um but you know there's plans for storyline and they're moving forward and that's good too but I could have paused there for a while and kept doing that bit for a bit I, I thought it was really funny and her voiceovers are hilarious and didn't Ray wasn't Ray like I don't want you going back to help Chelsea. I mean, right? Because she was being her psychological counselor or whatever. Or yeah, he wasn't yeah. sold on the whole like <laughs> perturbing he her into up. some kind of uh, you know remission. I don't think he was buying that. I mean, he called. He kind of called it out. And and I recently had done. I think last time. I think on Friday. I I hadn't really spoken to Chelsea with the voiceover, and that was the first time that I dealt with it. Um, and it's really odd because <laughs> like as an actor you're supposed to listen right you're supposed to be open to whoever you're speaking to but i'm not hearing her so i'm like so you gotta take a beat and be like 
Okay, this is just a beat in my own thoughts. I'm not listening to her because they literally play it over there. That's your cue. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was like, oh, okay, just hang in there and then speak again. So it's a little trickery going on. So yeah. maybe challenging. Challenging. So would Ray and Chelsea team up to like thwart those two? Mm. You see, Obviously, Chelsea's like this yeah. badass con artist. So that's what I'm saying. It's the opposite of Ray. It would be, I, I'd be game to play. I think it'd be so kind of fun. I'd be into, just I'm to... having so much fun now because I think the conflict is good for the show. I think people are kind of engaged in it. And to me, that's the most important thing. Like people are wanting to watch what's going on. So I, I'm enjoying the whole conflict and being able to lose my stuff on Sharon is, is fun and, and on Adam. Or Mark, sorry. Uh, it's it's hey, a lot of fun. Hey. It's fun. I, I like conflict. It's like, what else? I, I, I can't keep saying, well, Sharon, okay, whatever you say. Yeah, but would he do the manipulation like Adam does to keep his woman? Would he manipulate? You know, he's got this core um, morality to him that I have never witnessed in my life, either from a human being or a character on the page. Uh, he's extremely noble. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if he's willing to sacrifice his own character to, to do that. Um, I always thought he would like have this moment where he might be boozing too hard, but they haven't gone that direct direction either. Um, so I have yet to find the kind of thing ultimately, which will tear him down which probably is Sharon at the end of the day. She'll probably be like the thorn in the side that constantly breaks him down. Uh, so maybe that'll make him spin at some point. Hey, I was just trying to help Chelsea. Mm. I think the therapy actually ends up working. Doesn't she move her finger or something? She moved it once. Or well, yeah. then there you go. Which finger was it? Was or... it the middle finger? <laughs> probably. Sharon, you did it. Good I did. Job. She's so like Sharon trying to give her the good finger. Therapist, and she told Ray, "I really think that this could work for her." And you know, I uh -huh. care so much for her. For like hilarious. And, and Mark, I mean, what does he think of Chelsea? I mean, isn't that what's he going to do? Well, I, it's uh. He knows she's a can be manip. He knows Chelsea's been a con artist too. He knows. Her yeah, best. so that's always got to be in the back of his back of his mind, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, maybe she will start to uh, try to con Adam and maybe he might pick up on it. Maybe he doesn't pick up on it. Um, but, you know, ob obviously it's a really uh, sad situation that Adam is in, you know. Um, Does he feel bad uh, about that he has these feelings for Sharon or he doesn't really, and he's got Chelsea? Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> you know, th th there's a lot going on in his life, I mean, it's unfortunate Connor's not there. He's off at boarding school. And then Adam wasn't there because he went to Sharon's wedding to peek his head in and, and Chelsea had her stroke. And then now, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of guilt there. Um, and I think it's really frustrating to him that he can't have a conversation with this woman who's his fiance. And, you know, this is his fault. He caused all this. Um, but there's always the underlying pull from Sharon. And, um, you know, after they, they kissed, you know, there's a lot of conflicted feelings there. And after him having his conversation with Victor, you know, it's nice to see them kind of uh, having a cooling off and, you know, some things that Victor said may have that's set that. in a little bit. Um, so that's a, a nice change of pace for Adam and Victor kind of to get along, get along a little bit. Um, yeah. Sharon, it was interesting. We did our 25th anniversary and you said her ultimate love is Adam. Yeah. And people were like, and we had the people were like, oh my God, I thought it was Nick. It's what it's what do you mean it's Adam? How could you say it's Adam? Well, um, when you think about uh, not just this the characters and what they've been through, but the history of the Young and the Restless, how stories are usually told. And what I mean by all of that is um Nikki and Victor have always been the, you know the couple of history of Young and the Restless and, and they are very different. Um, they actually remind me more of Sharon and Adam than Sharon and Nick. Um, Nick sort of turned, he turned out to be Victor's good son. 
and Adam was more, you know, in the image of his father. And so um, for that reason, you know, like, there you, <laughs> um, but for that reason, and also, uh, you know, it would be the obvious choice to think or to, to guess that Sharon and Nick are going to be in game. Um, so I think Soap's tried to not go in the obvious choice, the obvious way. So those are the reasons why I had said that of the two. So, you know, yeah, there are two men that she uh, been married to, you know, and were, were said to be the biggest loves of her life, both Victor's kids. I, I, choosing between those, I, that's why I said, that's why I think that uh, is true. And also Sharon and Adam don't have a lot of the pain there that Sharon and Nick have from... Mm -hmm you know, multiple cheatings, loss of a child. It's very hard for a couple to ever get past that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and I also think that Sharon and Nick are now, they're sort of together in a way anyway, because they are such good friends as co-parents. They have a new relationship. So it's not together in a romantic way, but their relationship is, is um, really, is really great now. And it's very full um, for what it is. But he would, but Nick would be team Ray, not team Adam. Yeah. And that's very great about the whole thing is that Nick is team Ray all the way. Yeah. Hey, Sharon. <laughs> How are Hi, you? Mark. How are you, Sharon? Good. How are you, Ben? So team so Adam? Who's on team what? Adam? Victor? <laughs> Victor's on team yes. Adam. Adam. Victor, yeah. Victor is yeah. 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 Which is kind of cool for once. Yeah. They're on the yeah. same page. That is. <laughs> it's very cool yes yeah i like those scenes that you guys did when there was a cooling off you guys got along it was nice it's just been so long two years of arguing and uh which makes sense for those two characters but it's really nice to see him laughing with you that yeah, was that the was ones really at uh society right uh, yeah Mark? yeah, yeah. Was, we're just sitting talking at the table right and and he kind of digs into to sharon about like your relationship with sharon and all that yeah yeah, yeah those it was cool. nice. It was, uh, cool. I had fun with those scenes and I'm glad that we had that cooling off because it has been so harsh, you know, since Adam came back and, you know, yeah. declaring war on Victor. And uh, so it's it's nice. And Eric had fun with those too. You could tell yeah. he was enjoying yeah. those. Yeah, he was laughing and I'm saying, yeah. just, Sharon, we're just friends, okay? Yeah. <laughs> just friends. And he laughed. Oh, that's a friendship. That was years ago. That was years yeah. ago. Years ago. Dad? I mean, <laughs> I was going to say that all of you were so have had such have had great scenes in Sharon's breast cancer story in her storyline the cancer storyline, um, Sharon the whole thing that you have been telling um, how has it been for you to play? What I liked really liked about that story is it wasn't a, a repeated story of how we've seen that story told every time we've basically seen it told and there's a reason why it's written that way every time because there are certain things that most people do face, um, very scary stuff. And um, when we tell, when any writer tells a story in any medium, they tend to highlight those things. But what gets lost because of that is some of the smaller other things that women go through. The, the worry about people knowing, the worry about your relationships with each person in your family. You know, losing family members is, for one reason or another, when somebody's sick, is a great fear and it often happens and people don't talk about that. Um, and um, that, you know, we, we just touched on that a lot on what this does to your personal relationships with your friends, your family, your ex, um, the uh, ver various kinds of fears that people have instead of, you know, seeing her in the hospital all the time and seeing her losing her hair and crying every day about it. You know, I've certainly had people close to me go through this and that was not what their life was like on a day-to-day -day basis. So they did lose their hair, unfortunately, some, some didn't. But their day-to-day -day life was scary in a different way, trying to figure out who they're going to be in the world after this and what their relationships are going to be like after this, whether they'll survive or not. Um, and uh, so I liked that about the story. Yeah, you guys too. Jordy, what did you think? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, what's 
most poignant is, you know, the, the scarring and who, you know, the, the physicality that takes on is, is she still going to be attractive to her, her lover, what have you, you know, those were things that I had never really, for whatever reason, hadn't seen. And when I read those things, I was like, that's very human for a cop, for a woman to feel that way and to be able to express those things to the person in her life. And for that person to be like, the way that they turned it was like, those scars are actually, I love those scars. Like that means you fought through this thing that God forbid can happen to any of us. And that, you know, to me was just a beautiful thing. You know, that, that shows that that's, that's a depth that, you know, we all kind of strive for. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad that they addressed those things. Yeah. Mark, did you have anything about that story? working with Sharon in that because she would turn to Adam at times yeah oh um, I mean I, I thought it was it was a great story and Sharon and Jordy they did, did a really great job I was I was waiting for them to write when Adam finds out about it you know and it took a little while um and that was a huge deal you know because who Sharon is to Adam um so he kind of uh as soon as he found out you know he came to Sharon's side and said, hey, whatever you need, anything, I'm, I'm here for you. And um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it was, a, it was a good story. I kind of, I kind of was, I was like, man, I, you know, I was hoping that Adam would have found out sooner, um, but I'm glad he initially found out and, and um, you know, I can't, I apologize. It seems like it's been so long ago since those scenes were when, when Adam found out and, um, I don't know. It didn't seem like they, there was a whole lot of time spent on Adam and Sharon addressing this cancer thing and, uh, around that. It wasn't a whole lot, which on some level I was kind of a little disappointed in, but um, it was nice. As soon as he found out, I rushed over there and, and, and you know, they had some scenes talking about that. In uh, closing, what can you, uh, Sharon, what would you say as a tease to the fans to look forward to in this massive seismic They've kissed, it's out in public, every, you know, the pictures surfaced, you know, like what? <laughs> well, I, I guess I guess, you know, I would say stay tuned because it's a really great love story. And, you know, we talked about all the various aspects of the relationships involved and with, with Chelsea and what Ray has been through before with Mia. Um, and then we were talking about all of our involvement in the cancer story from last year. But what I would say is, you know, I love telling a good love story. It seems like so much simpler on the one hand than telling a cancer storyline or something other horrific. But, you know, soap operas, to me, at the end of the day, they're about love. They're about relationships and you want to see a love story. And sometimes you want to even see a triangle because, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I think that we sometimes turn to television and watch our favorite characters to see um, the reasons why they make certain decisions in their life one way or another kind of helps us process maybe something we're going through. And well, that's what television always did to me. Um, you know, whether if you find that you either agreed with something or you didn't, but it helps you process a message. And, um, and when you're tuning into soaps, what you want to see is love. Jordy, what would you say for fans of Ray and Sharon? And really, you're gonna go to me after she said it like that? Yeah. I was like, sorry. Very well said. Are you saying oh, did really it? Are you agreeing up. with her? Mark, saying you might as well not comment. What? I was like, I was <laughs> like oh, that. Michael's gonna end the show right. on that. It was perfect. Everyone gets a moment. <laughs> um, no, I'm kidding. You'll what do better. What, do you, what do you say, Jordy? I, I no, listen, I really I'm like I said, I'm really enjoying it because I love playing conflict. It's so much fun. And the fact that I get to work with these two brilliant people, it's it's a lot of fun. And and I think uh everybody just wants to do good work and you know, have fun doing it and be supportive of one another, which we have, thank God. Um yeah, we're gonna see uh we're going to see what happens. I think they're going to squeeze this thing for all it's worth. And it's going to, <laughs> it's going to go. Should we be worried about Ray or we, what, what should we be doing? What are, is he going to like? You have some scenes coming up with Victor, don't you? I mean, Ray gets to do a lot of other interesting yeah. things in this yeah. story. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, something has been released in Ray. It's rage that's finally come through. Um, and we'll see what that does to, to, 
uh, my personality uh, and I get to deal with, uh, you know, the best of, of Genoa City in various different ways. Um, but ultimately, Ray is going to fight. He's and he's been fighting for her, so uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. Okay, Mark, final word. Uh, You're the Adam's the polarizing character of the bunch. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just have to echo what Jordy and Sharon said. I mean, it just <laughs> you know, they, no, but like Jordy said, I mean, it's it, the fact that we get to work with each other and everybody's so great and, and we get to tell good stories. And, um, you know, I, I love, um, acting and I, and I know they do and we just have a whole lot of fun um and the story it is getting you know juicy and it sounds like Ray's gonna you know take it up a notch and um things are gonna get a little crazy um you know you never know what Chelsea's gonna do uh, yeah I don't think that's gonna go over well once and once she finds out about that um so yeah there's a lot of a lot of good stuff coming up and um is he gonna? I'm, I'm, is he admitted to himself that he loves Sharon, Adam? Has Adam admitted that to himself? Yeah. Well, he's admitted it to Sharon several times. <laughs> so I guess he must. Hey, you can't it. put you can't put me on the spot. This is what I'm talking about with the love triangles. You know, it's, <laughs> okay. it's different. I mean, of course, of, of of course, he loves Sharon. You know, Sharon was his first love. They were married, and and they have a deep deep history and um you know they, they understand each other they get each other um and she gets him you know she's like one of the only people uh he can turn to and that's why she never turns her back on adam and that causes problems so we'll see All right. thank you so much jordy it was so great to see you sharon always great to see you mark thank you so much thank Watch you these three weekdays on the young and the restless on cbs there's so much drama ahead with Ray, Sharon, and Adam. You don't want to miss it. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. See, see you later. Bye. Bye.